Hello and welcome back to the Google Workspace Update Podcast from Strawberry 7. My name is Adam. And my name is Adam. We're here every week to bring you the latest things happening in the world of Google Workspace. This podcast is available in audio format from your regular podcast provider and also in video format on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. For anybody watching on our YouTube channel, this is a very special episode. You might notice I'm in a slightly different setting and that's because I'm broadcasting to you live from Germany. I'm here on holiday at the moment, but wanted to still bring you these updates. Coming up on the show today. We have two updates for you today, so it's going to be quite a short show, and those are both to do with Google Docs. So let's get to it. On with the show. Right, first up this week, we've got a Google Docs update. So there's. <laughs> what surprise, um, Adam? <laughs> So there are improvements to content organization in Google Docs. So Google is rolling out improvements to the formatting and customization options of tables and contents in Google Docs. You will now have the option to toggle between three default styles, toggle page numbers, toggle tab leader styling, uh, which is uh, adding lines between the header and the page number, and also to include and indent headings based on levels. With these enhanced customizations, Google hopes this highly requested feature refines titles and headings to personalize the content of your document. Google is also re reorganizing the options included in the tables properties sidebar in docs to make it easier for you to find and utilize table formatting options. Upon adding or editing a table, you will notice a new table section with alignment preferences and a new cell selection with clearer cell specific formatting options within the table properties sidebar. Hmm. Okay, so one of the things I'm thinking straight away with this update is I wonder if these improvements to tables is going to improve the reliability when you're going from, say, a Word document to Google Docs. Because it can be a bit of a problem that we found, haven't we, Adam, with our customers when they're going from Word to Google Docs, particularly in documents with tables, it, it can sort of mess the formatting up, can't it? Yes, that's quite. That's an interesting thought, actually. I didn't actually think of that. Y yes, y you're quite right. One of um, uh, quite a, a common thing that lots of our customers d do notice um, when they're y using Microsoft Word or when they go to use uh, Google Docs, if they're opening their Word document within Docs or equally the other way around, then the formatting is it's okay, but maybe it's like 90, 95% there. Some things, particularly the tables, can be just a little bit misaligned, and so that can make them a little bit more reluctant to switch completely to Google Docs, for example. Mm. I mean, I, I was a little bit sort of confused as you were reading this, because it talks about improvements around formatting of tables, but then it did seem to be talking about page numbers and styles and things in the header and stuff like that, which isn't... I mean, you, obviously you can sort of put headers in tables, but it's not something that's exclusively within tables. And page numbers certainly isn't. That's something that's within the document itself. Um, I think the, the, the picture which you've included in the description here, um, for anybody listening new, Adam always includes a link in the description of our podcast, whether it's in the podcast or in the video, to a link of the script that we read from. And in there, there's now some handy little pictures. And I think in the picture, it just gives you a little bit of a better idea in the menu there where you can select these different formatting options and things like that. Um, but it do you sort of see what I mean, Adam? It's a little bit strange that it was talking about sort of formatting and page numbers when that's not something that's exclusively to do with tables. And, and the other thing that I um, found that was very relevant towards tables is when it went into the tables properties. You know, when it was talking about the additional things in the tables properties, that is very relevant. Again, there's a very nice little picture in there showing the alignment that you were talking about there that you can put in. So I'd encourage anybody listening, if you want to know some more details about these different options. Have a little look at these pictures in the description documents because they are very um, useful there. But it might be interesting, like we say, to see what it's going to be like if there's if it's going to reduce those formatting issues when it sort of goes across. 
Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Adam. And who? How do people get started with this? Okay, so for the admins, uh, there is no admin control uh, for this feature, but for the end users, uh, so for, for the tables options, they can go to insert a table, click on the table options button at the top toolbar, and then open the table properties sidebar. You can also right click on the table and select table properties to open the sidebar. For the table of contents, you can go to insert, then table of contents. In the paginated mode, there are three tables of contents, quick layout options, which are plain text, uh, dotted, and also links. You can also uh, right click the newly created table of contents and select table of contents options to open the sidebar. Okay, I just wanted to um, pause there a second. Um, I, I, I've got to admit, I don't think Google have done the best job ever writing this um, particular update because they didn't actually, unless I completely missed it, I don't think they actually mentioned about being able to put a table of contents in instantly um, further up, unless I've uh, just missed that in what you've uh, said there. But that is actually really useful. That's a really, really useful feature, being able to just drop a table of contents in really quickly and really easily there. Um, that's a really, really nice feature. So an additional little thing there in that update then of something that people can now do. That's really, really nice. Um, what's the rollout phase on this, Adam, and who are we going to see this available? Okay, so the rollout for the table of contents, the rapid release started on March the 20th with the scheduled release starting on April the 3rd. For the table sidebar, rapid release and scheduled release started on March the 16th. So that was actually a little while ago for that one, but, um, but they've only just announced the update right now. Great. And um, who is this available for? I think it's right across the board, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So this is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers, as well as legacy G Suite Basic and business customers. It is also available to users with a personal Google account. Lovely. So just available to everybody. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adam. What have we got next? Uh, up next, we have uh, a Google Docs update. Fancy that. <laughs> so uh, there is now the option to add or remove client-side encryption from a Google Doc. So it sounds like there's almost a bit of an echo in here because I'm sure we've mentioned this once or twice before. Um, once or twice. But, <laughs> yeah, but it looks like uh, client-side encryption has, is now coming to Google Docs. So you can now choose to add client-side encryption to an existing document or remove it from an already encrypted document by going to file, make a copy, add or remove additional encryption. This update gives you the flexibility to control encryption as your documents and projects evolve and progress. Great. So for anybody not familiar, we uh, the reason Adam's saying about Neko being here is because we have had quite a few updates over, um, it must be a few months now, mustn't it, Adam, where we've seen this client-side encryption popping up. And I think it's um, a very good feature that Google is clearly adding to and expanding. So for anybody kind of unfamiliar with this, what client-side encryption enables you to do is if you're an admin or if you are a even an end user with your own managing your own Google uh, environment, what you can do is you can add your own encryption system and that will encrypt your documents. And Google have done this, I think, to try and show, and Google have said previously, I said, look, we do encrypt stuff our end. But if you want to encrypt it with your own encryption token, whether you want to do that just for your own peace of mind or whether you want to do that to meet some kind of regulatory requirement that you have, maybe you're encrypting medical information, bio store information, in our case, like student information, and there's some kind of government requirement there to encrypt in a certain way or even encrypt in a way that's separate to your provider. Google allow you to do that. And as an admin, you can go in and you can sort of add that uh, client-side encryption layer in with a particular encryption provider, encry encryption token. And what Google have been doing is then enabling you to use that client-side encryption on different <coughs> parts of Google Workspace. So from memory, Adam, I think, it, I think it's kind of started around Google Takeout or something like that, was it? 
Yes, we've seen group, um, client-side encryption practically right across the boards by now. And uh, we also recently did it for Google Calendar. And yeah, there's quite a lot of Google Workspace that we have seen um, client-side encryption coming to. Um, something that I noticed that I find a little bit interesting like this, which I don't think was um, a, a requirement, I might be wrong, but I don't think it was there for any of the others. It looks like uh, in order to add client-side encryption for the Google Docs, you need to actually make a copy of the document to add on the client side encryption so it looks so it kind of implies that you may have your um the the, the original document and then the copy that is also encrypted i'm not sure if that's going to be the same uh, when it comes out for uh, google sheets it wasn't mentioned with google calendar events because obviously you can copy uh, calendar events but um just based on this update it does uh, imply that you, you when you're adding the client side encryption you're adding that to the copy not the original hmm. that is an interesting point yeah and the picture that you've included in the description would support that as well because the picture is in the copy menu rather than just creating the document new maybe it's as simple as google haven't quite figured out or added the button to put it onto the document because of course with Google right you don't sort of save as such it's all auto saved so you only create the document and when you create the document it just opens so maybe Google just literally haven't added the button to say yup encrypt this whereas when you're doing a copy of the document because it opens a dialog box they're able you're able to add uh, the encryption on at that point because they, they've got a space effectively to put the tick box in maybe it's as simple as that or maybe there's a, another reason that it needs to be a copy. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder with going into more details about the picture and ticking the box, because you're going to tell us how you can get started with this. And the good thing that I can already see in this Get Started is there's a little bit about what I was talking about there with the admin control. So um, let us know how we can get started with this, please, Adam. Yes, so uh, maybe in a future update, we'll see that there's just uh, the, that magic button right there. Maybe that'll be next week or the week after, or who knows when we'll see that. But for right now, so uh, to get started with this for the admins, uh, client-side encryption can be enabled at the domain or organizational unit and group levels. Uh, that, that is within the Google Admin Console, then go to Security, Access and Data Control, then Client-side Encryption. I've also um, added a link into our document that we include in all of our podcasts um, just to, to help you, if you for anybody that wanted a little bit more information about client-side encryption uh, for the end users if client-side encryption has been enabled by your admin you can go to uh, Google's Help Center again I've added in the link uh, to learn more about working with encrypted files in Google uh, Drive Docs Sheets and Slides great so for anybody listening as you can hear for that admin getting started part you can hear how you sort of go to the generic security center uh, or the security area and you add in the client-side encryption there. This isn't something that you're specifically doing in the Google Docs control because it's sort of a universal thing that you can use in multiple parts of Google Workspace. Thank you very much, Adam. That's very informative. And what's the rollout phase here and who's, the, uh, who's this being, going to be available to Okay, so uh, rapid release started on March the 23rd, with a scheduled release starting on April the 6th. Uh, this update is going to be available to Google Worksp Workspace Enterprise Plus, Education Standard, and Education Plus customers. Mm. So right at the top end then, like we've been seeing with these client-side encryption systems, it's, it's kind of at the top end, but very nice that they've expanded on the education side a bit more, understanding that education clients, because they're dealing with that student data, do need probably to have that client-side encryption enabled by default. Yes, absolutely. So if, if you're just using a, a personal account, then th this this isn't really going to be for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely for more of those enterprise customers or, or the education um, customers. Okay, well, that's it, everybody. That's everything that you need to know about the latest updates happening around Google Workspace. Remember that there is a video version of this podcast available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. And if you go there, you'll see me in my lovely German hotel room at the moment. <laughs> Um, I think we're going to do one more episode uh, next week where I'll still be in Germany and then we're going to be returning back to normal. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We'll be back again next week with more updates. Goodbye. Bye.